All right, welcome back to another Fabric Tip Friday. I'm gonna try to do a short one here on what I call a blind stitch. I've had a few people call on how to do this. What I call a blind stitch, or if you're familiar with doing fabric or if you're a beginner, uh, as we know, like on a rib, we stitch the fabric down to the top, around the bottom, and make our knot go over and under to the next hole. We're going to the bottom and in the top of the wing. Well, there's situations, I'm just gonna use example of a super cub, that this is the tank bay area. Now, normally you would want to do your stitching or your riveting fabric rivets before the tank is put in. But let's say there's a situation to where you're needing to stitch around just this and you can't go all the way through because your fuel tank's in this area. So this piece of material, if you're looking at it crossways, let's just say it's a T-shaped rib or a stamped rib like this. You're needing, instead of your fabric, your stitch going all the way to the top of the rib and around, you're needing it to just go around this short area and back to tie. Well, we, you know, we sell a lot of different kind of needles like this. This is your normal long needle. Uh, and I guess to try to demonstrate this, most people think, well, I'll do a short curved needle. Well, the actual size of a rib may be like that. So as you can see, if this is the layer of fabric, when you go in right here, there's no way to get that to come back here. Now there's gonna be some Yahoo out there that's got some little short weird design or something, but you're, you just got the tools on hand and these are really stiff. Uh, you can't bend them a lot. A lot of times we'll take a welding rod and flatten one end a little bit with a hammer, just enough to drill a 16th hole and sharpen it and they're a little bit more flexible. But to try to demonstrate this, I just had a piece of test bed stuff here that say this is what you're trying to stitch. And like I mentioned before, You've got your whole, you, let's just imagine that this is the reinforcement tape on the top. You've already got a little bit of glue to make the holes come out good. You've got little holes punched, marked, say two inch. And you're wanting to stitch just around this little short area. Uh, just also to mention, there's another area that this happens, like on a super cub, on the very back part where the aileron goes, a lot of times you may have stitches coming like this, but you wanna get one more stitch in this area right here. So that's another area that this might work. So as you see, if you went in here, now, now that looks like that's gonna come right back up, but that's cause I'm, I'm not going around a rib. If I was having to go around a rib, that's not gonna work. So what I do, let's say we're stitching I'm left-handed or I, I usually go in this side. Let's say we're needing this stitch to go around and up to my left. What I a lot of times do, we get a welding rod so where it's a little bit flexible where I can maneuver it the way I want and go down and I'll skip up maybe one, two, three ribs and I'll find that hole on the other side. Now this piece is straight, but it would be a longer curve. I'll go over to the other side, come out, and I don't have thread on this, but, and I'll slowly pull my thread and it's gonna, it's gonna imagine it going down and around that rib and you're gonna pull it out. Now you're gonna go right back in the same hole and you're gonna come to this side and you're gonna find your hole and come back out and bring it out. Now that has you around that. Now I warn you, don't be wrenching on something because remember you had this T-shaped here, you got a sharp edge that could possibly be there. If you can think far enough ahead before you cover the wing, you might encapsulate that with some masking tape or packing tape to knock down the sharp edge of it. <coughs> Excuse me, another situation is you go under and let's say you've got a lot of, as we know, this going on and something's gonna hit you or whatever you may end up with a weird deal that your, your thread ends up going around a diagonal or something. So you may need to go backwards to come back up. You can take a light and shine through, but 
Uh, most time, if it's on a long area like this, you don't have much problem. But the other thing I was gonna say, if you can't get it to line out with anything like that, you may end up just out in the open, just finding a hole and coming through and then going back. Because remember, this is gonna be glued down and it's gonna be a, a, an, a reinforcement tape over it. So a little extra hole right in through there is not gonna hurt. I mean, I've, I've had times where I've got in a situation that I've literally just did this, just come plumb out here in the open. See, that kind of works itself back in and go back. And that's one of the good things about the, the PFU 1030 AirTech primer I work that back in, primer will actually feel that and sand over and not even be an issue there. So that's just kind of the, one of the ways that I do a blind stitch is basically go somewhere else and come out and go back in the same hole. But just remember that part I was telling you here that you may end up, another thing is a, a cable. A, you know, you need to really have a light. You, you know, you don't want to let a control cable or something get caught up in that. So. That's just what we call a blind stitch, or it's one of the ways that I do it. I know there's a lot of other ways that people probably come up with, but that's the fast way and to move on with it. Thank you.